Have you ever thought that your fears, anxieties, and insecurities might not belong to you? Have you ever thought that some uh, behaviors that you have that you cannot control, pleasing people, putting people before you, trying to assist everybody, even forgetting about you so much that you lose your identity? Have you ever thought where that is coming from? In the next few minutes, I would like to talk to you about the soul entrapment in the womb. After this. Welcome back. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Antonio Sancho and I practice and teach introspective hypnosis. Today I want to talk to you about soul entrapment in the womb. So in order to talk about soul entrapment in the womb, let's first define what is soul entrapment, right? When somebody comes for a session uh, with me or some other colleagues or people maybe that to my class, right? When they bring uh, symptoms that do not have a logical explanations or do not have a medical explanation or some behavioral issues that do not make sense. Uh, what I automatically think is that that symptom might come from uh, trauma. Now we are talking about symptoms that could be emotional, physical, right, or as I said, uh, behavior issues. So. I'm going to think that that comes or suspect or assume for some time that it comes from a trauma. And what is a trauma? A trauma is something that our soul was not able to finish, was not able to complete. In other words, uh, we were not able to, to experience at three levels, physical, emotional, and mental. When we don't, we're not able to complete that, when that is pending, then part of our energy is trapped in that experience. That is called soul entrapment. Now, this can happen either in this life, right, early childhood, can happen in the womb, or it can happen in past lives. Actually, it can also happen after our body dies. But for now, let's talk about the womb, soul entrapment in the womb. So let's think about what happens we, when we are in our mother's body. We need to understand that our mother, right, has her own um, past life, her own uh, lessons to learn, her own fears, emotions, sadness, thoughts, and obviously she has her own vibrational field, energetic field. When we are in her womb, we're exposed to that. We can feel everything she feels, but at the same time, we have our own lessons, our own fears, traumas, uh, our own pending issues, things that we're going to bring to this new life once we're born. So when we do a regression to the womb, it is basically our first contact with the soul. At this time I'm talking with a soul that's gonna be born and has kind of, still has an idea what's gonna happen once, uh, once that soul is, is born. Um, depending on uh, what they experience in the womb, uh, that's gonna kind of dictate how they're going to behave uh, for some time or most of the time. Let me give an example. Let's say that while your mother was pregnant, um, she was considering, divo um, not divorce, she was considering abortion, right? I'm going to abort this baby, I am not ready, I'm too young, um, the father of this baby doesn't want to take responsibility, so I'm thinking about aborting this. You as a, as a soul inside the fetus, right, uh, you're able to understand this, you're able to feel, you're able to and uh, read your mother's thoughts and then you said oh my god they're going to kill me i'm going to stand still here stay still not, not going to move and i'm going to say anything because if they realize i'm here then i'm going to be killed so what happens when you're born what type of behavior this can cause hey i don't want to mess with anybody i just want to be unnoticed i don't want to have any confrontation with anybody because my life is in danger that is what i'm going to bring with me once i'm born <clears throat> what else can happen right let's say that Let's say that your mother, and let's wait because there's some people passing by. We're at Lake Douglas here in beautiful Tennessee. So what else can, can happen in this case? <clears throat> let's assume that uh, your mother 
thinking about getting a divorce, right? Doesn't want, doesn't love your father anymore. Your father has been abusing your mother. <clears throat> and then she um, realizes that she's pregnant uh, and you are there, right? So because of you, she decides not to leave the father, your father. And because she doesn't leave your father, she's still exposed to sadness, anxiety, and abuse. What could you be thinking while that is taking place? You're gonna blame yourself. Because of me, my mother had to stay with my father. Because of me, my mother is going through this abuse. Because of me, uh, my mother is sad. So what are you thinking? What is gonna be your behavior, your reaction once you're born? When I'm born, I'm going to do anything that is possible for me to make my mother happy because it is my fault that she's going through this. And that's why uh, people start acting this way. They started forgetting about the identity and it's everything about the parents, making the parents happy, trying to make it up for them. Let me give you another example. Let's say that uh, as you're in your mother's womb, your father says, Oh, I want this one to be a boy. I want this one to be a boy. I want this one to be a boy. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what to do if this one is not a boy. And you know you're going to be a girl. What do you think you're going to feel inside the womb? I'm going to disappoint my father. I don't know what to do. I know I'm going to be a girl, but I don't know how I can make it out for my father. So once you're born, again, you start the same behavior of pleasing your father, doing whatever it takes to please your father. Some people, and it happened to me in two sessions, some people decided to change their um, sexual identity just to please the father. Doesn't make sense, does it? But that's, that is exactly what happened. So just keep, keep in mind anything that can happen in the womb that is going to affect you. So what we do in this type of sessions is help the soul, because it's a soul inside the body, help the soul going through this and be born and understand that certain behaviors uh, do not belong to them and help them cut those uh, you, wanna, you wanna put it this way we're gonna free that part of that soul that got trapped in that experience so again this is what I wanted to share with you about soul entrapping in the womb if you practice hypnosis um, you need to understand that if you don't do this, if you don't consider regression to the womb as, as part of your work, your work, in my humble opinion, right, is not complete because um, the symptoms and soul entrapment can be created in many places. As I said, early childhood, later in life, in the womb, in a past life, even after um, we die, right? So. Keep in mind that it's a good idea to always explore the womb. There's a lot of things that happen in the womb. There's a lot of questions that you can ask a soul when it's, while it's in the womb inside that fetus, right? Um, what is the purpose of your life? Why did you choose this body? Why is this body different than others? Um, what do you think is going to happen once you're born? Uh, why, why did you choose these parents? So many questions that you can ask and much information you can get to help your client to help this soul that is going to be born and sometimes they're afraid they know what's coming and know the lessons they're going to face in life are going to be challenging are going to be difficult and they don't want to be born and that's also creating a problem so in what we do in what introspective hypnosis does is basically help the soul because for the soul it's just one life with experiences in different bodies and that's why we carry traumas from one body to another body to another body and we're here to help the soul Anyway, if you want to get more information about what I do, uh, you can visit my website, antoniosanjo.com. I'll put it here in the screen. Uh, I also teach introspective hypnosis classes if you decide to learn what I do. Obviously, if you're watching these videos because you're visiting my YouTube channel, go watch some of my sessions. You'll understand what takes place in a session, and I feel blessed that I'm able to help my clients this way and that they trust me enough to open their soul in order to get the assistance they need. So, for now, thank you again. I'm gonna leave you with that beautiful scenery behind me, and you have a nice day. Bye-bye.